And we're back, Fashion Dolls. We are back. It is February 5th, Simply Saturday. And our very special guest today is a fresh new face, new up and coming actor. You might have seen him alongside Gavin Harden, who we've had on the show previously. And his film, Missing, was dropped in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So make sure you guys share this live. Let everyone know the style by Stevie Daytime is in full effect. I'm super excited about this interview today. And I'm a little bit nervous, you guys. Like, ugh. <laughs> so let me go ahead and share this with Michael so that we can get him in here, ladies and gentlemen. And he's back. So let's dive right into this interview. Because All right. Hey, welcome, you? welcome. Hey, how you doing, Stevie? Perfect. I'm doing excellent. Welcome to my dollhouse. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate you uh, for the invite. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, this interview uh, and uh, sharing a little bit about my story and getting to know a little bit about you as well. Yes. I, I, I'm not going to lie, Michael. I was kind of scared doing this interview because I seen missing. And I know what your character, Troy, was giving in that film. So I was like, is he going to crack me upside the head, nah, too, while I'm nah, about uh, trying to It's funny. Uh, that was one of the first projects uh, that me and Gavin actually worked on together. Uh, really liked working with him. Uh, always answer the phone when he calls. Um, yeah, so missing. Uh, we got some mixed reviews, uh, but it was very good to, you know, produce and create our own project. Uh, a lot of times as actors, we're auditioning and always looking for opportunities. Uh, so I really appreciate like Gavin, uh, Alan Brooks, different people like that who just said, hey, man, I'll give you an opportunity on this independent scene. All right. All right. So before we dive into this interview, I would like to know how's 2022 been for you thus far? How has this new year, we're now in the middle of the month now, and so much has happened, yeah. you know, from 2021 up until now. We've lost some giants, Sydney Portier and things like that. I just want to know where you're at, where your mind is at, and how are you feeling? Any uh, resolutions that you've set that are now coming to full circle into 2022? Uh, yeah, so uh, for 2022, my uh, major focus was myself. Uh, so uh, what I mean by that is been in the gym, uh, been brushing my hair, you know, uh, drinking my water, just really focus on myself. Um, I'm one of the individuals, you know, who throughout my entire life, like I was taught not to be selfish. Uh, so I always try to look out for others. Uh, but just in being in this pandemic, I think, you know, we've all, you know, suffered a lot of losses. I uh, lost my mother in 2021. Uh, so that was, a, you know, a huge struggle and really been dealing with that. Uh, but I just said, you know, this year I'm going to focus on myself. Um, and, and whether that's reading, working out, whatever it is, I feel like will put me in a better space. Uh, that's what my 2022 will be about. Well, first off, I would be remiss if I wouldn't say my condolences go to you and your family. Right. It's difficult losing a mother yes. or a parent just in general and just throughout this whole pandemic. Well, we'll talk about that yes. throughout the interview. I don't want to get too emotional oh, already. Yeah, 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 I was no, yeah. In 2018, so I definitely can relate to that, losing a family member or a loved one. Yeah. All right, so... Before we get into this, tell us a little bit about yourself, because you are a fresh new face, fresh on the scene. I found out about you from watching Missing, which is which is Gavin Harden's project, who I've had on my show previously. So you're a fresh new face, fresh to the scene. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and you know how many brothers, how many sisters? Yeah, uh, originally I'm from Arkansas. Uh, I have a younger brother and two older sisters. Uh, both of my parents are deceased. Uh, I moved to Atlanta in 2009 to attend Morehouse College. Uh, graduated in 2014. I was a, a fifth year. I spent a little extra time on the yard, Stevie. Uh, frat, Pledge Kappa. Uh, really, you know, just had a great time since coming to Atlanta. Grew a lot, learned a lot personally and professionally. Uh, now I currently uh, work as a director of a nonprofit called Center for Employment Opportunities. Uh, we help men and women returning home from incarceration with immediate employment. Uh, and that's just, you know, just who I am at my core. Really like to help other people. Uh, really feel that the different things that I've been through in life is for me to minister and help others. Uh, and that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Family-oriented, uh, goal-driven. Uh, outside of that, really have a passion for film and entertainment. Uh, but one thing I really like about being in Atlanta is not having to be uh, so driven by the industry. Uh, for example, if I, if I was in Hollywood, I think it would be a little different. Uh, but being in Atlanta, being in the South, uh, I work a day job you know, and pursue acting and, and my dreams, but I don't have to just be so focused and bogged down on my next role because I have a great job uh, that allows me to feel fulfilled and accomplished by helping other people each day. 
absolutely. And I'm glad that you mentioned historically black colleges yeah. and university, Morehouse, because it's Black History Month. And we know there's a lot of things that are going to be going on with uh, historically black colleges and university. And we just not too long ago had Founders Day. So yeah. shout out to all the yeah. fraternities and sororities out there. My grandmother was, you know, she did some work with the AKA Correct. back in her yeah. day. God bless her soul. She definitely was involved in the community as well too. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, so uh, if I'm honest, I uh, didn't know much uh, about HBCUs growing up, uh, being from Arkansas, uh, not having a lot of family members, you know, who went to college. Um, and I didn't know Morehouse was an all boys school mm -hmm. until I was on the way. Uh, so I literally was in Austell and my mom asked me, you know, how do you feel about going to this all boys school? I told her, I was like, I feel like turning around. Like, I didn't even know. Uh, I had just got accepted. I looked at the list of alumni and I mean, not too many people would tell this, but I mean, you know, uh, I just was happy to get in. Uh, and the response that people uh, gave me once I let them know that I had been accepted into Morehouse kind of told me everything. Uh, and once I got there, I learned more about the culture, uh, the legacy of HBCUs and just the uh, black empowerment. Uh, and it really was, uh, I could say, the best decision that I made in my life, uh, although uh, it wasn't totally uh, my own doing. Okay, yeah. okay. So we're going to go into acting. Okay. What made you get to start into acting? What made you get into acting? Yeah, so uh, it was honestly my freshman uh, English teacher, uh, Dr. Albert Turner. Uh, I was a, a class clown, even in college, you know, just a comedian, jokester. Uh, he was like, you know, I think you're really funny, uh, but you also, you know, should consider acting. Uh, and I auditioned for this play called Bad As I Want to Be. Didn't even realize uh, that I was uh, going to get the opportunity to work with Dr. Stephanie Dunn, uh, who's big in the literature community, uh, as well as uh, Gregory Williams. Uh, he did a lot of plays with Kenny Leon, uh, Jeffrey Williams, excuse me, uh, the piano lesson. Just didn't know what I was getting myself into. Uh, and it lit a few. Uh, so I did a lot of theater or a couple plays in college. Um, and once I graduated, uh, it kind of came back around even at work. People like, hey, man, you're really funny. You know, you got the look. Like, have you ever thought about, you know, film and entertainment? Uh, so I started doing stand-up uh, at the Laughing Skull in Atlanta uh, and some other open mics. Um, started auditioning. Uh, there was a website called Love to Act on Facebook. You know, doing the typical um, leaving no stone unturned on the independent scene. Um, and, and literally just got my start that way. Uh, I do a lot of work with Victor Jones of Can't Stop Now uh, Productions. He uh, is a guy in Atlanta who we got connected to. Uh, he does a lot of independent films as well. Uh, him with Rasheed McGriff with RR Media. Uh, so a lot on the independent scene. Um, as you know or may not know, a lot of auditioning. Uh, I am signed with Soul Talent uh, out of South Carolina. They do a lot of... Um, um, they have a lot of actors in the Southeast region, so sign with them. But it's honestly just been a grind, Stevie, uh, auditioning and just waiting for that big break. Well, you mentioned South Carolina. That's my hometown. Yeah, That's how yeah. my face is kind of lit up. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, we got some talent down here. It's brewing. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah, brewing down yeah. here. And I uh, used to live in South Carolina. I lived in uh, Pendleton, mm -hmm. right outside of Clemson for a little while. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to transition right into your acting career. We're going to go down the list of roles and films that you starred in. Um, now that you know, A Family Betrayal, SWA Tech, Greener Grass, Snapped. I didn't know you were on that show. Yeah, that was yeah, one of my yeah. favorite shows. I had to shows get my uh, True Crime TV. TV in there. Um, that was kind of like a step up, you know. Uh, you see a lot of guys on TV. It's like, how are they booking those roles? Uh, and come to find out, it was Facebook. A lot of the roles that I booked early on, a lot of those casting calls were posted on Facebook. Uh, so I tell people, anybody who's really looking to get involved in the film community in Atlanta, Facebook is a very good resource. Um, you've done For My Man, yeah. which also falls under that arena of crime. Yeah. Um, you did also... Um, Fatal Attraction, yeah. which is one of my another one of my favorite crime shows yeah. to watch. I've had Tyrone Nathaniel on the show. Yeah. He also yeah. was on Fatal Attraction as well too. Um, you've done Missing, which is one of my favorites. I was like, oh, I was. We gonna talk about that yeah. film, yeah. that project right there, because I can't shake that. I'm like, that's that could have been my grandma yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, I could have been right there. You know, I would have been. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I was so mad in that part. I said, why y'all did that, yeah, that lady? The peppermint. I said, look at these, <laughs> look at these two suckers yeah. in the car sitting here sucking on the peppermints <laughs> after they done yeah. popped the old lady out. I was so mad. But being an actor, do you ever find yourself getting caught up into your character? Because I talked to Tyrone in my previous interview, and I asked him that question. You did fail attraction. 
And he said he literally had to kind of step back because in one of the scenes, yeah. the character he was um, hitting with the sledgehammer and he had to make it look as real as possible. Yeah. And, and it got too real for him. So he was like, okay, cut. This is enough. Have you ever find yourself trying, getting too deep into a character where it's just like, okay, I need to come back to Michael now? Um, not really. Um, I think the closest I've had to that moment was when I did for my man. Uh, and the reason why is because it's the one why I actually saw myself dead. Uh, and that's something that I, you know, as an actor, like I try to shy away from uh, because, I, you know, they say art imitates life. And I believe that. Uh, and I don't believe I'll witness like my own death. Like that's not something I experience. Uh, so outside of that, um, it's really uh, easy for me to go in those darker spaces. Uh, and that's for me to try to show my chops a little bit because I'm already uh, on the comedic side. Uh, and I feel like just as an actor to be taken serious, uh, it's not it's good to not be necessarily boxed in. Um, so for me, it's really easy for me to do the drama, uh, more intense roles. Just because it, it's just that's when I feel like I'm really acting or reacting. Shout outs to Gavin. Gavin yeah. is here. I sent him the live. Yeah, Shout outs to up, him. Man? Just talking about missing and the project, and then the end. I was like, when I seen the ending part, I'm not gonna give it away. Yeah. Um. I was not expecting that. Yeah. I was like, I want to see more, yeah. more, and more. I want to see more. But I watch it over and over again when I want a good suspense thriller or something. But I, I literally have to watch that with the lights yeah, on because yeah. I'll be thinking of somebody trying to sneak up in the house and try to get me. So, <laughs> but other than that, your your personality is different from your characters. Yeah. And I ask that question because I always bring up Lupita. When Lupita did Us, mm -hmm. she literally had to detox yeah. from that character. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it literally takes a lot out of you portraying a character angela bassett when she portrayed when she portrayed uh tina turner yeah. for her it was the same thing she said she literally had to train mm -hmm. ruthlessly for this character for to portray tina turner yeah. like if you're gonna put on you gotta put on all the way it's go hard or go home yeah so what's running through your mind when you're getting the script when you're reading for your characters and then it's on set um you're right in production mode and you're ready to get into character. What's running through your mind? Uh, for me, it's just doing all the legwork before you get to set. Um, just, you know, preparations and doing that background work on your character, uh, really making it you. Uh, because like I said, it's, it's acting. It's not so much acting, it's reacting, uh, active listening, making sure that you're really uh, in tune with that scene partner or different scene uh, characters in that scene. Uh, so for me, again, it's it's it's, and I, I think early on too, like you'd be so focused on lines and not understanding that it's a lot about evading the commotions and the tent behind the lines. Uh, so that's really what I, I really like to do. That scene partner work, uh, really have that chemistry uh, with the individuals that I'm working with, uh, because I mean the camera picks up everything. You know, all those thoughts. If you're not really in that moment, uh, it'll tell on you uh, real quick. Uh, and and it really just being present. Uh, you really try to lock in, you know, I may turn off my phone, you know, not take too many personal calls, texting, strolling, social media, just really trying to stay in character. Uh, but it can be really hard sometimes um, if you if you have that dynamic with a scene partner. Uh, so, for example, uh, Family Betrayal, uh, there was the Dr. Laura character, like we really hated each other. So the character, jo the, the guy who played him, Joshua Shipman, really good dude, really cool. You know, really, yeah, you know. but but in in this movie we hate each other. Uh, so for me, it's just really just staying present and being in that moment. Uh, but if I'm honest, I haven't had um, a production that was too long to where I just really had to stay in character so long to where it was like, all right, what's really me and what's really the character? Um, but I think the 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 darkest role I played is in Rico. Uh, and now that you know. So uh, that was probably the darkest uh, character that I've ever played. Um, he was a rapist. So that was, uh, you know, not just giving too much of it, but it was just like, yeah, it was it was probably the roughest role that I had to take in terms of like really going to another space. My goodness. Yeah. So the, most of the characters that you portrayed in a way is sort of like the villains, the bad guys. Yeah. And I interviewed um, Eamon Joseph and I asked him the same question. I said, almost every character that you portrayed has been like a villain in a way, yeah. but you kind of get to go be behind the villain's head and find out what, what is the reason for why they're doing what they're doing, right. the backstory. Right. It's always a back to yeah. whatever villain in the film. And then the good character, you find out more about them and their connection with the good versus the bad side of right. it. So it, it works out both ways. But my next question for you is, 
you know, being a black man in Hollywood, there's so many misconceptions about black actors out here. And I'm not wanting to take certain roles or how um, Leslie Jones said this type typecasting. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to portray one specific role. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the whole typecasting in Hollywood when it pertains to black actors and not just black actors, but actresses as well, too? Uh, for me, uh, there's only and, I, and, I, and again, Morehouse, good upbringing. Um, so, so I separate the characters from my personal beliefs. For me, the only adjective that goes in front of actor that really matters to me is working actor. Typecast me. Like, please, if, if, if I'm the big guy, you know, the tough guy, whatever role you want, if, that, if, if that's me working and being able to support myself and my family and my community uh, through getting these big checks, then, hey, that doesn't matter to me. Um, because to me, it's so much of what you do off stream, right? Um, and again, I want to play a lot of roles. Villains, the, the good guy, the corporate dad, um, coming home from work, you know, the, the successful basketball player. I mean, I'm not limiting myself to any role. Uh, but again, to me, it's, it's it's important to be working. Uh, and I think a lot of times people get that conf confused. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I have no problem being typecast if that, if that keeps me working. But I also understand uh, playing into uh, the stereotypes and the misconceptions of our culture. Uh, so I would like to uh, be a producer that creates a, a wide range of stories, right? It's not all bad and it's not all good either. Um, yeah, so th that's my take on it, Stevie. I was just about to, you must have read my mind because I was just about to ask you, could you see yourself getting behind the lens as well too? Like so many um, actors and actresses, Regina King is one, mm -hmm. of course, Spike Lee, of course, um, Don Cheadle and, and Denzel Washington and so many yeah. others um, have gotten behind the lens, stuff from in front of the camera to now behind the lens and now they're directing projects mm -hmm. as well too. Yeah. Could you see yourself doing that? Yeah, I definitely could. Uh, I definitely could see myself doing that. Uh, but the biggest thing to me is the actors taking the roles that they've been given and now using those resources to stale, tell different stories, right? So if you think about Denzel, if he don't have that level of success, he can't tell any story that he want to tell. Regina King, if she don't have her platform, she can't make that. What is the movie they just released? All Fall Down? What, what is that movie they just dropped? The Harder They Fall. Yeah, The Harder, the harder they, they Fall. fall. Yeah, like she can't make that type film without the boys in the hood and all these other roles that she took in order to make her successful to then take the resources, the money, the relationships that she has to produce films. Uh, and that's definitely a, a goal of mine. Uh, and it's more so important to me to produce my own films than it is to be in front of the camera. Uh, because for me, it's, it's not uh, walking through an open door. It's creating a door for yourself and walking through it. Uh, production uh, and being able to produce your own work, it really gives you that power, that autonomy to do whatever you want. Um, and I think a lot of times, too, people look at the platform. And for me, like, I just really like acting, right? So, yeah, I would love to be a big name uh, in Hollywood on any market or in any market, excuse me. But at the same time, it's something that I genuinely enjoy doing uh, and versus waiting on that call. That's why I like people like Gavin who says, hey, I'm not going to wait. Like, we're going to make our own films. We're going to network horizontally versus focusing, you know, versus, excuse me, focusing on moving up the ladder. All right. Yeah. Sounds amazing. And we can't wait. Um, and you said a big name is it's coming. And everybody that I've almost had on my platform has went on to do bigger and more amazing things. I'm, you've worked with someone else who um, I interviewed, Daryl D.C. Chambers. Yeah. Now yeah. he's the host of this show, which is like a music video yeah. rap competition. Yeah. He came on my platform and he was telling me, Miss Stevie, I'm going to be working on this. Yeah. And then um, Joshua, who's went on to do other projects as well, too. Um, one actor that I've worked with, um, also, he said, Miss Stevie, I'm going to be doing something in Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. And the I two knew. connected because when I seen the trailer, yeah. I said, oh, my God, he told me he was going to. I said, oh, yeah. I have yeah. first on my platform. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so now <laughs> yeah. what y'all got to say now? So, yeah, it's manifestation. Yeah. Whatever you put out there in the universe is going to come to full circle. Yeah. So for you, what is something that you manifested to come true in 2022? And has it ever happened? Like you ever had an epiphany? Uh, Yeah, I think for me, it, it's the job that I'm working. Like I started it going into last year, going into this year. Uh, and I mean, I literally wrote what I wanted down, you know, the salary that I wanted, uh, the culture, uh, the hours, the, the shift. Um, and I mean, literally it came into fruition. Uh, but for me, that's just the, the way that I live my life. Uh, and it's, 
and and also too like not being envious of others because like as you mentioned Swatek, like I was a feature extra in that, you know, and Janelle was literally trying to throw me lines. Janelle Young, who you see in Wu Tang, right? So it's like lifting people up like Janelle, DC, I'm happy to hear that he's doing shows, uh seeing Josh in the Harry and Tubman movement. You know, like like I had never been envious of other people. For me, it's like, oh, if it if it if it can happen for them, it can happen for me in a matter of time. But more so the way I live my life is I believe if I continue to help other people, God will give me the desires of my heart. So it's not it's not me being selfish or like, you know, doing something, wanting something in return. I just believe if you do good, then good comes back. Uh, but at the end of the day, like when I look around and do inventory, you know, whether it be my next role tomorrow or a year from now, like I'm 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 good. I'm in a really good space. OK, OK. Bef I'm stalling you guys so before we get to these games because they're so good I just want to know you know more about Michael and what he's, he's such an amazing actor when I've seen him alongside Gavin and Missing I said who is this yeah. he's handsome Thank you. <laughs> and he's a bad guy and I was like okay now that wouldn't have been again that wouldn't have been my grandma let me be on the side near yeah. my grandma and her plot like that uh uh so <laughs> but that's what actors are supposed to do they're supposed to get you up in an uproar to make it believe Right. They, they're supposed to have you feeling some type of way because these things have happened to other people in real life as well too mm -hmm. so yeah it's a sort of close connection to either way so for you what keeps you grounded what keeps you influenced to keep going because you yes Gavin you too yeah, uh, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah I was mad at both of y'all when I seen missing <laughs> uh, what keeps you going what, what is perseverance to you what keeps you pursuing? Because so many people have just lost hope, you know, throughout this whole thing, like just giving up. What keeps you grounded? Yeah, so for me, it's just the uh, opportunity to change it. Uh, so like I was just telling my cousin, I was like, ever since I, I found my dad dead at eight years old, right? And like ever since then, like people have just been telling, like it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Uh, and for me, that's just the way I've just been looking at life. Like I've been through some really, uh, tough times but at the end of the day like i'm just able to move forward uh, and just remain optimistic and positive like that's me at my core i know if i'm being super negative like okay i need to probably just chill because i'm always looking you know up the road uh and just i just feel like each day that i wake up i'm able to change my situation uh, and always for my good uh so i think it has to be my upbringing my faith and just a, a positive outlook on life uh, I really believe if you were given another day to live, then you can really, you know, do something about whatever situation you're in. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And when I did my interview with, uh, I'm bringing up names because yeah. these people have also helped me along the yeah. way. And I'm pretty sure you caught some of the interviews and stuff as well. Um, I just had her on the show yesterday. Shout outs to her. I cannot remember her name. Yeah, I saw the uh, lady. I've had so many guests. <laughs> Shout outs to Jay, Miss Jay. Shout outs to her. Um, JL Allison. I had her on the show yesterday and she was just dropping nugget after nugget after nugget after nugget. And she's not only an actress and director, but she does dance as well, too. Mm -hmm. And yesterday she was saying at the end of the interview, which was celebrate your inner child, mm. celebrate your inner child. That was the best advice that she has given at the end of the interview. And just throughout the interview, she was giving advice on, you know, maintaining perseverance. Um, I had six time championship winner for powerlifting, Diesel yeah. Ramos, who's worked with Marvel on the show yeah. on the day before, it was Thursday. Yeah. And just throughout their careers as athletes and as actors and actresses, the whole thing was perseverance. So I'm curious to know what keeps a person persevering throughout life. And I know for me is God, that's one, mm -hmm. and my family, that's two. So everybody should have that strong support circle around them 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're dealing with. Definitely. All right. All right, Fashion Dolls, we're about to get into these games with Michael. And I, I'm a little oh. bit scared for the first one because the first one involves me. The first one is called Turn the Tables. Okay. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions, uncensored and unfiltered. I don't know what he's going to ask me. My heart is beating very, very fast. And then the next one is going to be called His Thoughts, where I'm going to call off the name of a famous actor. And he has to tell me the first word that comes to his mind about these actors. So we're going to start with Turn the Tables. Uh, so for me, it would be what made you just say, hey, I'm going to start doing these interviews. I'm going to just just try to start building my platform. Um, that's what I would like to know. 
Um, I it was so random for me. You know how when you're a teenager and you do things that are childish and immature. I was kind of cocky when I first started. I started in 2016, 2017, young, young black girl. And my mom said, what are you going to do after you graduate high school? That's the conversation that our parents always ask us. Um, are you going to college? What are you going to do? So I decided to pursue a career in beauty. I went to beauty school mm -hmm. um, and I got my license. The first time I went back and I took the theory part, which was online, I failed it. And I remember crying all the way back home from the career center. You know, I was pretty upset about it. And my girlfriend, who also took beauty school with me, and she did my hair for about six years on the show. Mm -hmm. So we both got licensed. She encouraged me to go back. And my father was like, uh-uh, you going back and you're going to take that test. I went back the second time and I passed that yeah. theory, which is the part you take on the computer, with flying colors. I, when the woman told me that I passed because there's, you have to sit right here and there's like this little webcam that takes your picture and you get a blue piece of paper for the state of South Carolina down here saying you passed or failed. Yeah. I passed both parts, Michael. Yeah. And the lady said, I asked her, I said, can I scream, man? She said, oh, no, no, yeah. no, baby, you can't scream. Yeah. So I wait until I hit down the third yeah. step and yeah. I almost went down yeah. rolling. <laughs> so I wait till I hit the car, the parking lot and I screamed so loud and I hugged my beauty school instructor, Ms. Stevenson. But the other young lady that went back with me, she didn't do so well on it. So I had to encourage her and give her the same pep talk that I got yeah. myself. So shout outs to her. She's always been an amazing part. She did my nails for years as well, too. So shout outs to her. But um, yeah, I can't believe I did it. Yeah. So how Style by Stevie came about was after I graduated high school and got my license and everything, I said, what is going to be my backup plan? You love makeup. You love hair. Why not create a platform where you can give people beauty tips? Because, you know, yeah. not only women, it, the show was going to be focused mainly on women. And I, I have co-hosts, as you guys know, I have male co-hosts. So I'll tell you how that comes about. We're going to skip through because it's a little long winded how this whole how I birthed this whole baby. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of like when Beyonce revealed her pregnancy. Yeah. So Miss Stevie revealed to the world style by Stevie. OK, <laughs> but. I remember going into this every day at 11 o'clock and I had this little tripod and this little tablet set up and I would be covering celebrity culture, yeah. pop topics, things like that. And I would always give a DIY every single day on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you go back and type in Miss Stevie DIY beauty tips, it's a list of them. Um, and I said, oh, these can be resourceful to people. These can be helpful to people to save money instead of going to beauty supply stores and uh, drug stores and purchasing face creams and all of these things. You can make it right at your own home. So I would always do that. And how the interviews came about was I have friends who are also in the industry, you know, independent artists, actors, actresses, and producers and directors as well as models. And I called them up and I said, why don't you come on and let me do an interview? Oh, wow. And one thing I was known for, which I posted a flashback for last Saturday, was that blonde mohawk. Mm -hmm. That blonde mohawk, shout outs to my hairstylist, yeah. Ron, <laughs> my best friend, Miranda, for that. Um, we came up with the whole look. And as the years progress, we've changed up, we've upgraded. It's no longer a tablet there mm -hmm. or me having to hold the tablet. The Bluetooth speakers, like when you'll see when I first started, yeah. I, you have to go back and check out some of my past ones. But now I said, let's add co-hosts to it. Let's add as guest interviews mm -hmm. and how the male co-host concept came about because I was originally going to go with women. I'm a woman and I'm the face of this platform. And I said, why not add men? Because men have been giving me inboxes like, yo, why are you going so hard yeah. on the men on yeah. some of these topics of dating and things like that? And I know the men watching the show, like, why she go so hard? So I said, I can't give the standpoint of a male. I, I'm a woman. So I, I can't give that. Mm -hmm. So I know men watching want to feel included as well, too. In order to have a conversation in the black community, you got to have both sides, the man's perspective and the woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. And there's one of my co-hosts right there, Marco. Hey, man. Amazing. Shout outs to him. This is Hear Me Out. Check out his podcast. Amazing. He talks a lot about mental health. So I said I was going to do it was 
I'm going to add male co-hosts because I want men to feel included as well, too. We all agree on this. We're all kind of like in the same page. We all kind of align with our thoughts and everything. If it's not Marco, then it's Johnny. And our thoughts kind of come together. So that's how you have a conversation. You know, I don't want it to see it as one-sided. Oh, well, she's bashing men yeah. or things like that. No, you know, I, I can only give it from a woman's perspective. So I said, why not add male co-hosts to kind of shake it up a bit and do things like that. Shout out to Clark Vincent, who was an ama amazing makeup artist and hairstylist. First thing when I talk about beauty, there you go. So he's coming on the show in March or April sometime. So make sure you um, definitely stay tuned for that. Definitely. But that's kind of how Style by Stevie, a little long-winded, was formed. Yeah. Good. That's good. Thank you. Yes, as many questions as you want. You get to ask as many questions as you want to in this segment. I'm uh, open who would be um, somebody who you really want to interview? I would have to say either Jennifer Lewis or Taraji P. Henson. Oh, wow, yeah. And I know that our energies would just combine and it would be awesome because... I like to have a good time, as you guys can see on the show and outside of the show. I'm always, you know, cracking jokes and things behind the scenes. And they're going to be like, okay, a little bit corny, but yeah. okay. So <laughs> I, I love to have a good time. So I would probably be laughing throughout the whole interview yeah. at Taraji or the Jennifer. Yeah. But those would be my top two choices. Okay. Uh, and then my, this is my last question. Uh, you're giving an interview on the uh, red carpet, wherever, big event. Who, what you wearing? Like, who style? Oh, it would definitely be styled by Stevie, oh, okay. or either I well, would wait, probably wait, wait. You get can't, you can't style your like it has to be another designer. Oh, a stylist. Yeah, somebody, what would yeah. I would or a stylist or designer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I it would have to be something um from the late Terry Mugler. Oh. I, I still can't believe that he's passing away. Mm -hmm. And the way that my body shake, you know how women are. I'm a little bit curvy. I, I you <laughs> know, I love to show the curves off and to show the decollete. So, you know. It's, it's all about the body yaddy yaddy over here. I'm okay. a woman, so it's got to be sensual. It's got to be sexy. It's got to be feminine, flirtatious, yeah. all of that. So um, I would have to say it would have to be something from Terry Mugler because he knows how to work a woman's angles on her body. If you go back to his um, vampire collection, which would have been 1992, 91, the silhouettes, yeah. the structure. Yeah. I, I love that. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all the questions I have. All right, it is time. We're going to do his thoughts, which is where I asked Michael. I dropped the name of an actor, and he tells me the first thing that comes to his mind about these actors that I'm going to drop. All right, so the first one that I'm going to start off with is Will Smith. Idol. Like he's, okay. Yeah, idol. Like, hands down, always looked up to Will Smith and admire him. Um, yeah, idol. All right, all right, all right. The second one would be the one and only Mr. Denzel Washington himself. The standard. Like, he's like, to me, you know, um, and I know that there's older actors, Sidney Portier, you know, people that he looked up to, but for me, he's like that standard. He's the rule. Okay. Number three would be Michael B. Jordan. Competition. <laughs> uh, the reason I say that, and I'm joking, but halfway, like, I feel like, you know, same, we would be the same look, go up for the same role. Now, again, I know he's Michael B. Jordan to have that name, uh, but I think he's somebody who I would be going for the same auditions, uh, and same roles if, if I had a larger platform. Okay, okay. Number four would be your colleague, of course, uh, Gavin Harden. Uh, network. Um, like he's, he's somebody who I would call on, uh, if, if somebody was looking for an actor or had some questions about production or just, you know, anything in the film and entertainment industry in the Atlanta area, he's somebody I would reach out to. Oh, okay. Um, number five, Michael L. Taylor. Um, Becoming. 
I'm still growing, you know, um, whether it be, like I said, the next year or 20 years from now. Like, it's, I just don't see me not pursuing something in film and entertainment. I don't see me plateauing. And what I mean by that is I'm going to always be reading, always trying to discover something new uh, and just be working towards what's next. All right. All right. All right, Fashion Dolls. And that concludes his thoughts. I'm going to let Michael um, take it away if he has any announcements, any projects that you have coming up. And what's the best advice that someone has given you? Or what advice would you give to young Black men and young Black women that are watching this interview that would love to get into acting? Yeah, um, so in terms of projects, uh, Jess uh, wrapped two short films uh, with Can't Stop Now Production. Uh, we did a, a short called Holla. Uh, which is really funny. It's a comedy. Uh, and then we just finished one called Smile. Uh, and it's, it's really prevalent. Uh, it's around suicide prevention. Uh, we know a lot of people, a lot of big name people have taken in their lives over the last week or so alone. Uh, and just a lot of people are just dealing with mental issues. So that's a really relevant film. Um, really looking forward to continuing to work with Victor Jones and his team. Uh, my co-star in both of those films, Krista Hines. Uh, maybe you'll have her back on the show one time. Uh, but she's a very, very, very good actress. Uh, I really look up to her and Gavin. Uh, I really think that they're two of the best actors that I know. Um, and then best advice, uh, I think, would be to pay yourself first. Uh, I think we work so hard, you know, um, to, to, to do things and, and we weren't just made to work and pay bills. Uh, I think, you know, and when I say pay myself first, that may mean putting it in a savings account. Before I pay a bill, it may be booking a flight, you know, to take a trip somewhere. Uh, but really pay yourself first. Love that. Love that. And I'm glad that you mentioned um, about suicide prevention, because as we know, um, Chelsea Chris, yeah. Miss USA, and my condolences, my yeah. heart goes to Regina King and our family. Yeah. This uh, yeah. is so unfortunate. Yeah. And I mean, these are so, people who, you know, quote unquote, have more resources, right? More money, things that, that you say, okay, they, they don't have no problems. And that's the thing, you know, for me, it's it's nobody's right from trials and tribulations. Uh, nobody's special in the fact that they're not dealing with something. Uh, and I think that's one thing that make me me in my closing. You know, just early on in life, I was just taught that I never had to dim my light, you know, to allow other people to shine because we're always self-consciously looking at ourselves. You know, big am I? You know, it's highly, you know, you're either too big, too small, too dark, too light, too pretty, too ugly. I mean, you know, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just... You know, it's it's just we, we have to always be in that space of, you know, just everybody's going through something. Just be kind, man, because you, you just never know. You never know. Uh, and nobody's exempt. And I want to give a shout out to my brother, K2. So hey. Make sure you guys go and subscribe to his channel, The K2 Spot, which is also an amazing talk show and platform. K2, you definitely should have Michael on your show definitely and Gavin as to. well too. Yeah, we'd love to be on so it. Shout outs to my brother. Um, and I want to give another announcement before we close out this interview. Um, thank you, Michael, for bringing that yeah. up. Um, if you know anyone that is in crisis mm -hmm. or that is struggling and needs immediate help, I'm going to give you guys to the number of the Suicide Prevention Hotline and that is 1-800-273- 8255-1-800-273-8255. Please talk to someone. Reach yes. out. I'm here. My DMs are open. Um, Michael, go and talk to him. Talk to Gavin, K2X, uh, anybody. Yes. Talk to someone. People care. It's not like people all are selfish in their own ways. Reach out to someone and talk to someone. Yeah. In the Black community, we have to break that. And that is that what goes on in this house Thank when it pertains to mental health stays in this house. That stigma will stick with us yeah. forever if we don't break the cycle. Yes. We have to. So talk to someone. Reach out, please. Yes. Yeah. All right, fashion dolls. Yeah. So I'm going to conclude this interview with the one and only Mr. Michael L. Taylor. Michael, it was such a pleasure having you here. Again, I was terrified because I said, uh, is he yeah, going to be no, like no. his character and miss him? But it's the complete opposite. Yeah, no, listen, I'm, I'm literally more comedy, comedic than, than anything. All right. All right. And I definitely would love to have you and Gavin back on definitely. in the future. Definitely. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for tuning in to Style by Stevie Daytime. We have some more amazing guests throughout the week. Make sure you guys are being safe this weekend. I love you all, and this interview will be up, so catch the replay. Take care. Right, thank you.
Bye-bye. You too.